Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Well, it's going to be a fill-free night. That's all. The coast is clear for all of you to call in about 25 minutes from right now. And we'll be here until, yes, we'll be here until midnight. Okay, we always start our calls in a very uh, strange way to this person because uh, the way he answers when we call. So let's uh, call out to Las Vegas and see what happens. Here we go. It says connecting. There we go. There we go. There we go. Usually he does it on uh, just a few. Famous last words. words. That guy sees us. He'll stop. James Dean, September 30th, 1955. <laughs> hey, Richie, why is the ground coming up so close? Buddy Holly, February 3rd, 1959. Hey, it looks like a friendly crowd. Malcolm X, February 21st, 1965. <laughs> I got lost them. Hey, sounds like more friends at the door. Let them in. Sharon Tate, August 9th, 1969. Fuck you, Pop. Marvin Gaye, April 1st, 1984. That's enough for now. Uh, let me see here. I got one. Um, uh, I hear, here we go. I got one for you. Uh, by the way, this okay. is this is Stephen Pearl, in case people Thank are, you very much, are, are wondering. Back. Still alive. Uh, uh, in case they're wondering, uh, it, it is Stephen <laughs> Pearl. Anyway, um, he wondered, uh, you kid. okay, how about this one? I think my scarf's caught in the <laughs> Isadora Duncan. Isadora Duncan, <laughs> of course. And the answer is Isadora Duncan, John F. Kennedy, Jane Mansfield, and Hank Williams. Uh, name three people seatbelts wouldn't have helped. Ding, 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 ding. Hmm. Who's your favorite automobile? Like mixing it. Yeah. Right, what's that? Who's your favorite automobile accident? Oh, my God. Uh, well, the one that looked the best was Jan Berry from Jan and Dean. Because if you saw the car, it looked like a crushed cube. Yeah, but he, he but he, through it. So but he, like, but it he, looked like when they take those cars and throw yeah. them like the mob, put the body in the truck, and they crush the car through a cube. But he That's lived. That's what the car looked like. And the guy, he barely lived yeah. through his, his brain damage, but he lived through it still. So he lived through that. But he Holy lived. Crap. He lived. You know. He lived for many, many years. Yeah. Uh, he, did yeah. he die finally? Yes, he died in two thousand four. Two thousand four. Okay, Dad, you yeah, know, surf, do you surf know? Wasn't up anymore. Surf's down. Uh, was it? Was it, uh, it, it? It was Dean Torrance, I think, that was in, supposedly implicated in the Frank Sinatra Jr. kidnapping. Yeah, I think it was friends of his that did it, and I, I don't think he had anything to do with it. So, uh, but it was friends of his that, uh, and uh, that's what happens. <laughs> Nowadays, well, he's dead now, but in the later on, they couldn't have fit him in the well, trunk. Well, so uh, supposedly yeah, Dean, was, Dean Torrance like didn't didn't do it. It was these two goofballs, right? But Dean yeah, Torrance, he Dean Torrance, hey, supposedly. What we're gonna do? Oh no, you won't. We're gonna do it. You'll see. <laughs> Dean Torrance, and and, uh, Jan and Dean, was supposedly implicated by the fact that he either financed it or was involved in it, but he didn't actually <laughs> do it. Okay, no. you know. Uh, you leave Dean alone. Best performance in the trunk of a car Dean. goes to Frank Sinatra Jr. <laughs> well, I thought they had Frank Sinatra. They get big money for him. Then he started singing in the trunk of the car. We got the wrong one. Oh crap! Actually, Frank Sinatra Jr. wasn't bad. No, both the kids have talent, Nancy and Frank Jr. And uh, they can both sing. They, you know, as they say that he ain't his old, he ain't his old man. Well, he, he can sing, and he, he wrote a song called Spice. In the early 70s, which was a really good song that he sang, and if his father sang it, it would have been a stone hit. Wow. Well, I, you know, when I um, uh, saw him or heard him perform, when he first started performing, he sounded so much like his dad, it was scary. Sure. You know? Mm -hmm. And later on, he wound up working for dad as his musical director for his shows. When yeah, I, he could, I think he conducted them for a while. Yeah, but. when I saw him at the Circle Star Theater, he was conducting the orchestra. You know. uh, two Sinatras for the price of one. The pool yeah. of Sinatra is Sinatra. And in later years, he became famous for being on Family Guy. Uh, That's right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the whole new generation is going to be Frank Jr. fans. 
Now, mo- a lot of people don't even know who we're talking about. But this was the son no, of Frank Sinatra. This was the son of Frank Sinatra, and he yeah. decided to have a career. And he was playing at uh, was it Harris, or was it? Uh, I, don't yeah. I don't know somewhere in Tahoe or. Somewhere it, like I that. think it was Harris, and uh, uh-huh. he was kidnapped from his uh, his hotel room or his uh, bungalow or whatever. And um, uh, I did, were they holding him for ransom, or what was the uh, what was the demand in the whole thing? Uh, they wanted some money, I believe. I guess like that. And, yeah. uh, Frank gave up the money, but they caught the guys. Yeah, as yeah. they always do. And didn't didn't Frank also have the mob involved in trying to solve the the kidnapping? I, uh, I, I think if he did, they would have found him a lot quicker. I don't know if they're good at finding guys, but uh, I don't know what happened with that exactly. But anyway, those guys went to jail, and uh, they got out years later. Yep. And and the whole story has never really, I don't think, totally been told, you know. You would have uh-huh. thought yeah. that it would have been a little more. Just do a movie about it. Just do a movie about it. Find some young they, actor. Wait a minute. I think. Junior wait a minute. Wait a minute. They did a movie. Oh, we just lost him. Son of a bitch. Uh, let me call him back again. I don't know why. This happens every now and then with Skype, and we we, we don't know why. Here we go. Come on, answer the phone. Hey, right, hey, what's yeah. going on here? Electronic. I, I don't know. Uh, lately, Skype on, on landline calls. Although I did one yesterday with, uh, with uh, um, uh, Larry. Uh, bubbles uh-huh. and no problem for two half hours, you know. So really, well, I should have I should have bought my shell my shell. What do you call it? The clam shell. The, the clam shell or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, what were we saying? Nineteen ninety eight. Oh yeah. Well, I you know uh, uh, Frank that that whole story has never really truly been told, but I think there was a made for television movie about it. Oh really? Yeah. Wow, I'd like to see yeah. that. I can't remember uh, when uh, or what it was called, but they I think they did make one. Um I mean here you had you this was a this was a big drama when it took place because you sure. had I guess the biggest performer in the world uh, as certainly yep. one of the wealthiest performers in the world. Oh sure. Without Frank Sinatra and his son gets kidnapped. Yep. And uh He's telling them whatever you want, you know, just don't hurt the kid. And yeah, and you can only in fifty bucks, okay? That's always worth. And there's film of Frank at the scene, you know, when they were trying to find the um, uh, who was who did it and trying to find yeah. Frank Jr. And he is really concerned. I mean, it, it's not like oh, sure. some. It's just fun, you know. No matter yeah. who you are, it's just fun, man. It's, now it's now and it could have a lot of you know. I don't know if Frank Jr. was involved in the whole thing. In other words, I don't know if it, I don't think it was a publicity stunt. No, it wasn't. People said it was, but I don't think it was. Yeah, I think it was two guys who thought that who who they did they know Frank Jr. I know that Dean Torrance knew Frank Jr. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I know it was two weeks after Kennedy got shot, so you know. Yeah. It was, it was, it was, so it's well, at least it happened. So. At least it got us off of that, you know, because yeah. it became a national obsession. Where's Frank Jr.? Is he going to be okay? Right. Yeah. You know? And yeah. Uh, they they found him. You know, I mean, he, they, I think they yeah. they left him by the side of the road somewhere, didn't they? If, I'm trying to remember. Yeah, the they let him out. They together. took him outside and dropped him off somewhere. So yeah. Start walking home, boy. Yeah. Uh, but there, I read a was read a book on Frank's life, and a lot, you know, this this particular incident was a was a huge chunk in the in the towards the end of the book about yeah. how Frank Jr. got kidnapped. But uh, you sure. know, I mean, that's uh, the price of fame. Okay. Now, on the other hand, did yeah. you think Nancy was any good? I liked I liked uh, Boots was a good song, and I liked You Only Live Twice. She did a good job on that one, the, the theme for the James Bond movie. And uh, what was the other she did with Lee Hazel with Jackson? I like that one. She yeah. had a good voice. Yeah, she was hot looking. You know, she had it. She had it going on. And she did her thing. She did her thing. Yeah, she you did know. her thing. And and she didn't. Her mini skirt and those boots, man. You ready for action back she, then? She, she never had the problem of being compared to Dad either, because she wasn't a guy. No. You know, no, exactly. e- even though she looked like she him. wasn't named Frank. So. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I mean, uh, you know, I'll tell you about people whose lives have been impacted by. By not their fame, but the fame of their parents. Yeah. Um, I was interviewing Desi Arnaz Jr. Yeah. 
Uh, and I said, it must have been hard to be you. <laughs> and he said, why? And I said, because the most famous you ever were was yeah. the day you were born. <laughs> Because you remember yeah. they did the whole thing about is Lucy going to give birth and so on, and they had a yeah. they had a they had an episode made where she gives birth and it, it was in the can until the day they knew that birth was taking place, and then they ran it. Okay, uh -huh. and I said that the most famous you ever were was the day you were born, <laughs> and I said you were so famous. And this is a piece of trivia: you were the first cover of TV Guide. Oh, he was. Huh? How about that? Yep. Yeah. A baby picture of Desi Arnaz Jr. First, yeah. <laughs> first cover of TV Guide. If ever anybody remembers what TV Guide was, yeah. I and I said I that must be a hell of a thing to you know uh, live up to. And he said, you know, you're right. That is the most yeah. famous I ever was. He said I became famous later on because I was with uh, Dino Desi and Billy or whatever that oh, group oh was. Oh God, yeah, sure. Uh, Dino Desi and Slomo. Yeah, yeah. But he said, I, and I got to be known for that too. But he yeah. said, when you're talking about pure fame and everybody knowing about me, yes, I guess the day I was born was the most famous I ever was. Yes. You know. he didn't even get to play himself on TV. They got another little Ricky. Yeah, out, yeah. Out they, they, they got another. They got another kid to play him. Yep. Did, did yeah, he, you can't be. You can't play. You're too. You're too right for the part. We'll get someone else. Later on in his mother's show, didn't he play himself? I'm trying to remember. Uh, I think it's one of one. There was a Lucy show. Then here's Lucy. Then how's Lucy? Then the, why is Lucy? Is one of the, one of those. I think the, he, and there. here's Lucy's Lucy face. Arnaz here's and, uh, his he Lucy's his face. Kids. Fogged out. You remember what they did with Lucy's face when she got older? They ran a, a, a fog over her face. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I on the ledge. No, no, no. It was literally done physically in the camera or something where All right. <laughs> wherever she went, there was just slight haze just right over her face. <laughs> but, Lucy no, her daughter, her no. daughter, I know, was in one of the shows yeah. uh, playing her daughter. And yeah. uh, I think he may have been on that show too. Uh, I'm not, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. Yeah, I think he was. I'm not sure what. Uh, but uh, we all know Gail Gordon was on the show. She always used Gail Gordon. Uh, Gail Gordon. Uh, <laughs> what do you? Mr. Gordon, are you gay? No, I'm a 90 year old guy. Was he gay? Was he gay? I I don't know. I don't know. I never never looked into that one, but uh, I know he could do a perfect cartwheel. So, which was good for a guy my, of his age. We, we, and think about it, he, he, yeah. was, he, he was younger than I am now, so that's pretty scary. The only people that would deny that somebody was gay more was the person that was gay in those days. Yep. Uh, you know, yep. I mean, Rashi. they I'm would... not gay, I'm festive. Like, for instance, there are a lot of stories now that Spencer Tracy was either gay or bi. Really? Yikes, yeah. I never heard that one. At, now, go watch Spencer Tracy and, with that information and see if you can see it. <laughs> you know, I and I have... I he was drunk most of the time. Well, I was watching It's a Mad, Mad, Mad World the other night, and I watched him, and I said, could be, you know. Yeah. And that, that, <laughs> that Catherine Hepburn, who loved him, was his beard, basically. And he, yep. he may, have, uh, been, he may uh, have been a beard for her. Wow. You know. Oh, man, you never know. You never it, know it, Hollywood. It's, it it's funny, folks, we can say all this shit because they can't sue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what are they going to do? Huh? Yeah. Uh, and now here's the one that got me. Uh, you know, I have this friend, Jack Garfine, um, who is he's 88 years old now, and he was a director in Hollywood and also uh, uh, a, uh, uh, a, a director at the uh, actor's studio. And he discovered, literally discovered, gave him his first job in a play, James Dean. And he and Dean wow. were very close to each other. In fact, he was with Dean at the studio the day he got into the car and started driving up north. Yikes. Oh, and his last words to him was, take it easy and be careful. Because he, what, oh, what, what he was afraid of was that Dean was going to go up. He was going to some races up north. Uh, and he was afraid that Dean would get in the race and he didn't yeah. want him to do that and they were shooting giant at the time yeah. and uh he was in a uh, a screening room watching rushes of giant with uh, elizabeth taylor and the door opens and this guy walks in and whispers to uh, uh elizabeth taylor and she goes oh my god and that's when they found out that james dean was dead 
Yeah, like, uh, you Donald Trump seed, you son of a bitch. I said to him, I said, the uh, what was the problem? You see, I said the problem with Dean was he was closeted gay, right? And Jack, who knew him better than I ever did, <laughs> okay, said <laughs> absolutely not. Aha. Uh-huh. So now I look at James Dean, and he doesn't look quite as gay as he used to look to me. But, ah, but didn't well, you? Was there an Italian actress? He was in love with Pierre Angeli or something. But her parents yes, forgave, in fact, he, him for marrying. He's not Italian. You stay away from him. It, by the way, he, he, might, he, he might be bisexual. Stay he mentioned away. Pierre Angeli to me and said they were very. You know, yeah. there's a perfect case where you can see that he's heterosexual. Said he no, yeah. he wasn't gay, and and that just changed my whole uh, way I thought about James Dean. I just assumed that he was closeted and that that was the big uh, secret, you know, and whatever. Yeah. Didn't you always hear that, that he was gay? Sure, sure. I heard that he was, uh, he liked that people put cigarettes out on his body and all kinds of things. Well, that's not being gay. <laughs> that's just being fucked up. <laughs> that's just being fucked up, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I... Uh, the human uh, ashtray, I don't believe it. Yeah, but anyway, so... Uh, uh, you know, when you talk about kids who are are the uh, children of famous people, uh, that's got to be the worst thing to deal with, you know? Uh-huh. Especially if, you know, then then you kind of think of going into the same business because you gotta, you got a leg up on it, you know? Sure. And, and, uh, Julian Lennon, whose new album is called Genius is Not Hereditary. <laughs> Julian Lennon was terrible. You know. Well, I like those two songs he did, and after that, it was like downhill. So. Well, what? Well, I mean, it wasn't. He was terrible. Here's what happens: if Julian Lennon yeah. had come along and, and and he hadn't had a famous father and he had performed, the question would be: would he have had a hit? Would he have yeah. had um, people pay attention to the music that he was doing? And yeah. if you can say yes independently of that, then you know maybe he was better than we thought he was. But the trouble uh-huh. is that when you're you're the son or the daughter or whatever of a famous person, you're expected if you're going to perform to be as good as they are. They're all sitting there with their exactly. arms folded, going, you know, show me. And I'm yeah, trying I'm trying to more. think of people who actually top their father, and one of them that uh-huh. I can think of is Alan Alda. Alan Alda and Sammy Davis Jr. Uh, Sa- well, Sa- <laughs> no, no. Sammy Davis Sr. <laughs> yeah, well, no, but um, uh, Alan Alda's father was an actor. Robert Alda played yeah, Robert jo- Alda, played sure. George Gershwin in the George Gershwin story. Uh, uh-huh. I think it was called Rhapsody in Blue was the name of the movie. And his uh-huh. father was a very famous actor. I think he's sure. actually had a bigger career. Uh-huh. Then uh, I know he was the guys and dolls on Broadway. In the yeah, 50s. yeah, yeah. But I think he had a bigger career than his father. It certainly, uh, yeah, sure. You on know, TV. certainly far more durable over the years. You know. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but who else am I thinking of? There's some others that that have been very successful, in spite of their parents. Kiefer Sutherland's been pretty successful. Yeah, he's done well. You know, he's done well, he's and, and nobody yeah. compares him to his father. Yeah, you know? that's true. He looks a bit like him too, so uh, you think they would, but uh, yeah, I think Donald's doing. Donald's busy doing uh, voiceovers for Buick commercials or whatever. And uh, oh <laughs> yeah, Buick. God, yeah. do I sound stoned enough? I'm Donald Sutherland. Well, Donald Sutherland has had a long career in and of himself. Sure. You know, I mean, right. a lot of these people hold on to it. Um, but I'm trying to think who else. Who else famous had uh, famous had some kids that you know tried it and didn't make it. You know, it, yeah. Uh, it, the, well, the, the Crosby boys, in a way. Oh, well, that that's the classic story. <laughs> oh, yeah, the Bing Crosby boys. The Crosby, he had what? Crosby five, he had five boys, was it? Five or four? Bing, Bang, Boom, Bubba, and, and Peppy. Yeah, I think there were five, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know how many there were. Well, and, they had two sets of kids from two different marriages. So. Yeah, well, uh, the, the, yeah, but the, uh, I think he had a total of, like, he had two with Catherine, I think. Uh-huh. But uh, the five boys or the four were they four or five? I can't remember. Anyway, the boys, I don't know. the boys oh. were just horrible. I mean, they were always getting in trouble. <laughs> uh, and then they, at one point, uh, I think uh, Gary tried to uh, uh, have some musical hits. He, I think Sam's song. 
Here's a little tune uh-huh. you'd love to crew, and they call it Sam's Song. I think he did that, <laughs> and it was actually uh-huh. a hit. But people uh-huh. only paid attention to him because he was Bing's son. Exactly. And, and the yeah, rest sure. of them, they so they all got together at a certain point and started a group, the Crosby Boys or whatever. Crosby Boys. <clears throat> <laughs> and Bing, who was the world's worst father, at least the first sure. time around, uh, because what did he, what did he call he called one of them bubble butt because he was fat? Come on, Bubba, it's a butt egg. It's a ball. They bubble butt. butt. Anyway, um, he decided that he would help them out and put them on his special uh, yeah. singing, and then he sang a song with them. Uh, uh, and that was them. that was the extent of him trying to help their career. The, the, their, <laughs> their lives were just a mess. I think yeah. they were divorced so many times that they can't even count the amount between the five of them or four of them or however. Yeah, I think there were a couple of suicides in there. So. Uh, was there a suicide? I think one of Bing's boys bit the bullet. One blew his brains <laughs> out with a bullet and they <laughs> took too many barbiturates and they buried them both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he was supposedly a terrible father. Just a horrible. Yeah, the hollow man. Well, he was, uh, you know, he was he was Catholic, and he uh, was very, he was kind of politically right wing. Uh, oh yeah, sure. All those old timey Hollywood Republicans. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that uh, much money for automatically a Republican. On the other hand, you want to talk about a real liberal? Sinatra was one of the biggest liberals in Hollywood. I mean, he in the forties and fifties, and then something happened that he made his millions. And no, no. Republican. Here's what here's what happened to begin with. His mother Dolly was a real liberal. She had always been a card carrying member oh, really? of the of the, Dolly, of, of the yeah. Democratic Party. You know, I mean, yeah. she was a big follower. Okay. Besides uh-huh. being a great abortionist. But anyway, that's another story. <laughs> no, she was a midwife, folks, and she believed that yep. people should be able to give up their children and if they didn't want to have give birth to them. And she knew how to do the procedure. Okay, that's, that's the best right. way of putting it. And I, the dolly. I look upon, the dolly. You don't want that brat. You don't want to send them to school. You don't want to lend them the car keys. Take them to Dolly. I, want, I look upon her as an early hero in that respect. Okay. <laughs> he goes. So anyway, anyway, um, so he became a diehard Democrat. I mean, just uh-huh. died in the wool. And, I mean, he went out, you know, he did everything he could for race relations. I'm a song, I, mm-hmm. The House I yep. Live In, you may remember that one. Uh, was yep. a whole plea right. to you know he made a film about it and uh, yep. he he was <laughs> and he was the guy who you know said unless Sammy Davis Jr. can stay in the hotel we're staying That's in right. in Vegas we're yep. not working the hotel uh, and and so he That's was right. he was just the best when it came to being a, a left winger the reason he turned right wasn't because his politics changed he turned oh. right because. Kennedy pissed him off. Kennedy That's was right. supposed That's to come right. see yeah. him in Palm Springs, and he built even a special uh, <laughs> a house for the Secret Service to stay in. He spent like a million bucks getting the place ready for the president to visit, and at the last minute, Jack's father said, don't go hang out with that mobster. It's not yep. good for you. And instead, he went and stayed with Bing Crosby, yeah, it was a Republican. And that <laughs> so depressed him. Uh, uh, oh, that's, uh, uh, that's what got Sinatra. Peter Lawford kicked out of the rat pack. That, no, that, that's what absolutely just turned the whole thing in another direction. Yeah. He just, he yep. suddenly, I think, started campaigning for Nixon and doing things like that. But it was all <laughs> because he was mad at what Kennedy did to him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't give a crap about Vietnam, Jack. I just want to get in good with Tricky Dick. Yeah, <laughs> and then of Dick course, will stay with me. And Dick then, loves to stay with me. Of course, me. you remember the, the the kiss of death for the career of Sammy Davis Jr. It was oh when he, God, why did you do it, Sammy? Why did you hug me? Oh, oh wait a minute, let me let me let me tell the audience. He hugged uh, Richard Nixon, you know, uh, <laughs> at, at some rally he was singing for, and um, uh, it, it, that it, it, every black in America hated him after that. Oh, sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. Man, they don't understand, man. I was trying to get in close with the administration so they'd help our people, man. I mean, either it's on now or it's going to be on, but there's a uh, special on PBS on on uh, uh, American Masters on Sammy Davis Uh Jr. and on his life, and I'm sure that's part of it. It's got to be. Yeah. It's just got to be. 
Uh, so anyway, you know, the, the only thing wrong with being um, the son of somebody famous is you and I weren't, and we had to just struggle, you know. That's right. Struggle to the his, his hard getting to the middle, but here we are. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Hey, listen, we have uh, run out of time, I guess. Already? You, my God. Jeez. That's my how time has flown, and I always have fun talking with you because you can remember all the old stuff. You know, yeah, Mr. Trivia, that's me. And that's I, all kinds of useless information. In this you know, and uh, I feel that you know people who uh, who can't remember the past are doomed to repeat it. So you know, that's right. Yeah. Anyway, thank you, Steve. We'll talk to you in a couple of weeks. Thank you, Alex. Looking forward to talking to you again. Stay well, my friend. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before. This is Gab. The Great American Broadcast Network. And, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We don't want to do it that way. Here, do it real smooth. There we go. Yeah, that's for all of you who are listening to us, uh, watch, watching us with the video. Those who aren't watching us with the video have no idea of what I just did or care what I just did. Okay, let me see. Let me bring up the... Uh, the Skype lines here so that we're ready to go with that so that when people call uh, we can talk to them. The, the Skype lines are open ladies and gentlemen. They are now the Skype lines are open. Uh, and uh, you can call if you want and we'll be happy to talk with you and uh, with you as it were. And I think everything's fine. I think, uh, I don't know, I, I, I had the, the interview was a little on the low side, but I can't figure out why, because it was on the, I don't know. Anyway, hello, how are you? How's your, how's your evening doing? Uh, I'm, I'm a little happier today than I was last night, because, you know, I told you about our friend Jack Garfine, who had a little situation that got him in the hospital, but uh, supposedly he's doing okay. So keep the fingers crossed. I'm going to try and go over and see him tomorrow. Uh, but anyway, uh, uh, give us a call. Uh, uh, Phil is not calling tonight, so that means that Tommy Amaguchi can call and Scott Boddicker can call. And uh, guess who's calling right now? Uh, yeah, if we uh, if we go over there. There he is, ladies and gentlemen, Jeff Stein. Hello, Jeff. Good evening. Good right. evening. Oh, you're very, very smooth. Good evening. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, uh, anyway, I'm uh, trying to wake up here, have some coffee. Then I wonder why I can't go to sleep, you know. I'm not supposed to have coffee anymore, so. Really? When, when did that uh, edict come down? Oh, I, two years ago, three years ago. Or something. Oh, okay. So you, you, So what do you do to wake up? I guess I don't wake up. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you don't wake up, you could really got problems, you know. But uh, actually, my wife usually puts the light on. <laughs> it always gets. Me. Didn't I read somewhere recently though that they suddenly found out that coffee was good for you? Uh, my cardiologist doesn't believe it. It doesn't believe it. Okay. No, I gotta ask her. <laughs> yeah. What other things? Because of the of the ticker. What what other things uh, do you have to stay away from? Um, yeah, I'm trying to remember. There's one uh, regular vegetable that you would. I can't remember what it is. Like tomato or something like that. No, no, it's some unusual one, and I I don't particularly like it yeah. anyway, and I can't remember what it is. But uh, there's one that uh, affects. It must affect the the uh, medications. Yeah. Yes. So, anyway, hello to Rob Alfano, who's here, yeah, and Charles good. Wallace is uh, is going to be joining us any second now, unless he's got some problem connecting. Are you there, Charles? Huh. Not yet. Well, he, you know, I, I brought him in, but apparently he's got some kind of problem. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So he'll call back. Here we, here we go, here we go. For some, yeah. yeah, I don't know why that happened, but, yeah. and now he's, there we go. What happened, Charles? It, 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 you called. I don't know. And then I answered. I had problems last night with Skype. I, I, I answered, and then you kept. Then you weren't answering, and then you law, left, and then yeah. you started uh, whirl coming back and whirling around. So 
Uh, I never did anything. Once I dialed the call in, yeah. I never touched it again. And yeah. it, it just, we did it all by itself. Who knows? It's probably Skype knows I'm using an old version of Skype and they're out to fuck me over. That's what it's all about. Hello to Josh Wheeler. Hello, Josh. Hello. Good evening to you. Uh, you too. Uh, gee, we have a nice panel already assembled here. Uh, uh, so anyway, ah, got burning eyes tonight. How's the weather where you are, Rob? Well, we got about six, seven inches of snow today. Really? Whoa. Really? We got yeah. We got a we got snow, and I was gonna go work out, and then since I need any excuse possible not to work out, I said, "Oh, it's snowing. I better not go out." So, I didn't go work out. So. And, and then I stayed home, and I and I and I I did something. You know, we have uh, the website is be and and all the uh, audio and stuff is being served by files that are kept on GoDaddy. All right, and they used to be really good. You know, you'd call them up and the guy would answer the phone and he would say, "How can I help you here? The good times that we're having at GoDaddy." And you tell him the problem, and he looks at things. He says, that's not working. Let me see what I can do about it. Let me call somebody, or let me talk to my supervisor. Wait a minute, and they get back to me and say, well, we'll get that taken care of. Thank you for calling. <laughs> now you know what nice. happens. You call this guy every time. This has been happening for the last, oh, maybe two years now. You call, and the first guy says, how can I help you? And you say, well, you know, I... In this particular case, my statistics for how many people were listening to the files and so on isn't coming up. It takes me to a page that says uh, that it's down on the server or something like that. And the guy says, well, what is your, uh, but I did this all with chat. What is your, uh, uh, you know, secret number or whatever? And I gave it to him. He, I gave it to him in a secure fashion. And uh, he said, I'll check. And he checked it. And he said, by golly, you're absolutely right. There is a problem there. I'm going to have to send you over to hosting. Oh boy. Now, every time I ever call, it's not like this guy can ever solve the problem. His job and his only job is to say, I can, I'm going to have to send you over to hosting. So I get sent over to hosting. And now that's we're waiting on that one for another, you know, 10 minutes and finally I get hosting and the guy goes what's your what's your special number your pin number and I mean we did that whole thing again he says I'll go check so now we're I'm, I'm sitting here for another five minutes and then he comes back on and he says I checked it it isn't working I'm going to have to go to I don't know uh, 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 number two I think is what he called the people he said they're going to have to check it out so I said, well, okay, go do that, and I'll talk to you later. And he said, oh, no, you have to stay here <laughs> while they check it out. And I said, well, wait a minute, this is ridiculous. Why do I have to remain here while they check it out? Can't you just check it out, and then if it isn't working, fix it? No, you have to be here. I said, if I hang up now, what, what's going to happen? Well, you're going to have to call back and initiate this all over again. <laughs> so I so I say okay I'll do it and and I since it was chat I just I went and cooked dinner <laughs> I did really and and I kept checking every now and then to see what was happening finally I get a thing back from him that says uh, the number two people or whoever they were whatever this this group was called uh, uh, checked it out and yes you have a problem here's your ticket number yeah. we'll let you know what's happening. Huh? You know, I sat around to get a ticket number. I, you couldn't continue doing this without me being on the line. What was I going to offer to this whole process by, by being on the line? So you now we go. Now we go over to Rob Alfano, who will give me the explanation. The reason is because if they they need to hold on to you, if they don't hold on to you, then the next one comes through, and then they can't help you. What? It's an automatic thing, right? So when they're done with, notice that anytime you call tech support, yeah. they yeah. say, hold on a second, and, they, and they, they have to finish the ticket. When they close the ticket, they let you go, the phone rings again. 
they have no way of controlling that. So if they let you go, they're going to have to go on to the next problem. Okay, but they, they went. But they, with your problem. but they knew I had a problem. I reported it. They should have just taken it and run with it. Okay, instead, but they can't because those guys are phone or they're bound to the, the to the technology. So they into, can't just they can't shut off. They're they're on shift and they're sitting there and they're going to take the next person in the queue. So unless I stay online. That's right. They can't continue the process of checking right. out the problem. <clears throat> the minute you hang up, they get and the call. only time that they can finally let me go is when they have issued a ticket number. When they're right, so they can move on to the next thing. Otherwise, that, that is so fucked, Rob. Well, that's the way the the cookie crumbles. <laughs> yeah, but I don't, I don't, I don't get it. it just makes no sense. I mean, it doesn't. It, I mean, well, it does if you're if if you're familiar with how these things work. It makes perfect sense. They don't have the they don't like you know they can't they have to put they get constant boom next next you know when they say you're the third one in the queue or you're the fourth one in the queue yeah. or whatever the shit just comes fast and furious as long as they got you they got you and they let you go yeah and they're on to the next person's problem so uh, that's just the way help desks work. This makes no sense whatsoever. It just doesn't. You know, I mean, it makes I, sense from a technology perspective. You may not like it from a customer service perspective because they don't have time to research your problem with you not on the phone. Because the phone, because it. once I'm not on the so phone anymore, the, the phone will ring and they have to pick it up. It. It's a queue, a queue system. Oh man! But, and the other problem with that is they get they get graded by how quickly they pick up that next call. Yeah. <laughs> So, so really, what we're saying is this whole system is fucked, and it is it's again it's working against me as the consumer. Uh, well, yeah, it, it, you could look at it that way. Part of it also is, and, and I usually like it when they don't hang up, because at least I know they're working on it. If they hang up, I never know what's going on. <clears throat> yeah. So I like the fact that you know that I get I get an answer before I get off the phone and. It's, it's resolved. Yeah, but you know, I, I got to tell you, uh, when I first started with GoDaddy, which had to be maybe four or five years ago, right? Um, uh, when I went with them five years ago, uh, I would call up and they would solve the problem on that first call. You know, there was none of this wait online. We've got to do that. I've got to send you to the next thing and I've got to send you to hosting. I mean, why did you even pick up anyway if all you had to do was send me to hosting? Why don't they just send me to hosting immediately? You know? Uh, but, I mean, it used to be that we got the problem solved when I made the call. They went click, 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 and they went, well, or if it was a continue, a problem that was something this guy couldn't solve, he said, I will put a ticket in for you and we'll work on it. And that was it. You know, get me off the fucking phone. Get to your next caller. You know. Yeah, you know, I think some of it is that it's the the basic, however busy the next level of support is. Yeah, yeah. And if they have that next level of support, or if they're doing it all themselves. Yeah. Well, I just I I, I don't know. I I guess I'm just old fashioned, and I want I want customer <laughs> service, and I don't think this amounts to customer <clears throat> service. This is a very annoying process. I just replaced um, my Wi-Fi networking here with one of those mesh networks, mm -hmm. Orbi, mm -hmm. the Netgear Orbi. Yeah. And I've had, I was up till three o'clock in the morning on the phone with them last night because I couldn't get it to work right. There, there's a satellite that's over here to my, this way, mm -hmm. right by the TV set. And then the main router is in my office. They're not that far from each other. Mm -hmm. And they kept disconnecting. They connect through a back channel, through a radio uh, somehow or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And I would connect it and then boom, it's gone. And I would connect it and boom, it's gone. And I've got so many smart Well, explain devices. to people who don't know what we're talking about. These mesh networks are what? They, they, they are all, they're different little boxes that are all linked to each other, right? One talks to the next one and so right. on. Right, and so you can move around the house and it seamlessly moves you from, from device to device to, so you always have a strong Wi-Fi signal. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And but the one in here, the this what they call the satellite, kept disconnecting, and I was on the phone four or five times yesterday, and I thought it was resolved, and then 
after I got through with GabNet last night, mm -hmm. I noticed that uh, the satellite was off. I couldn't get it to reconnect. I got on the phone, and then you get a guy on the phone. First off, he's from India. Well, oh, geez. And, oh, though, and he doesn't speak your language. Oh my God! And I'm he's saying I'm saying excuse me. Can you repeat that? I'm sorry. Can you say that again? Until I get fed up. I get fed up, and, and I then, just say, let me talk to somebody that speaks English. Yeah. Good luck with that, because I I called nine times yesterday, and it was all the same. There's no one that speaks English. Yeah. So so I finally uh, and what's what's annoying is they tell you, okay, you got to you got to reboot it. Okay, so I'm rebooting it. And it takes a long time for this thing to reboot. You see lights on the top and all the – and he keeps telling me, is it – he goes, okay, now do this. I'm like, dude, it's not finished booting. I just told you the light on the top is magenta. You, don't you know that magenta means it's not connected yet? So I, I was losing my shit with them last night because it was at 3 o'clock in the morning. And I'm thinking yeah. I got to go to work in the morning. And I, I need the, the – the you know, I need this ready for the morning because – I work from home, so I need internet and I need, you know, I got all this stuff I got to get done. And so then I, even today, I had a problem where I had my Fios router mm -hmm. and I had, and I had my laptop connected to that. I moved all my smart home stuff to the new Orbi. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize it though. I had two networks going on. I had a 192, 168 well, no, uh, you're going to confuse people with stuff like I that. I had I had two different networks. One yeah. on the one on the um, uh, one on the FiOS router, mm -hmm. and the everything else on the Orbi, which oh. is the ten network. Right. Okay. So those networks aren't going to talk to each other. And I'm wondering why my printer won't connect to my my you know my machine, my work laptop. And I finally realized it. So now I call Orbi, and they say you have to call Verizon. I call <laughs> Verizon. And I spent two hours on the phone with them today. You know, if my and Verizon, did you you bought your Orbi through Verizon, right? I did not. Oh, okay, you because can they... Buy, you can buy it from them. Yeah. Maybe that's what where you went wrong. Well, I, did, I, I got it for a steal. That's the only reason why I bought it. Yeah. It's like it's like $390, and I paid $185 for it. Oh, okay. So well, that's I'll, why you know I what, You it. know what I found that's kind of interesting, though, and, the, and people out there listening will be able to follow along with this because it's not big and technical. But I just got a new, a new TV set in the living room. And I've always had trouble getting a decent signal, Wi-Fi signal, to any of the things I had in there, like a Roku and an a old Apple TV and so on. And I installed this new... Uh, a TV set and it's got a built-in Roku and everything. I hook it up; it's picking up a great signal. It's like a hundred percent picking up a great signal. It seems as though the Wi-Fi uh, units in these TV sets and stuff are now stronger than they used to be and more sensitive than they used to be. Because mm -hmm. I'm getting, you know, I'm getting a great signal where I'm watching 4K in there on uh, on uh, uh, Netflix, for instance. On Wi-Fi. On Wi-Fi, yeah. That, that's impressive. Yeah, so I think that what they're doing is they've improved the whole Wi-Fi thing. That it is just all the newer pieces of equipment that are coming out, the built-in Wi-Fi is just stronger than it used to be. Yeah, it know? could be. Yeah, so. Anyway, so uh, anyway, I just I was on the I was doing this chat for about a half hour and I'm going, you know, this is just this is insane, you know. Uh, and then uh, I've got this other server thing up in Canada that I use. <laughs> and those guys, uh, I don't think they even speak English when I call. I think they're pawning me off. They're, they don't even have the best kind of customer support from India. They've got the one that doesn't know English yet. You know, and I mean, you don't understand a word they're saying. And they're asking you to do stuff, right? Yeah. Yes. Make sure that you have the thing in the body. What? I don't hear. I don't understand a word you're saying, <laughs> pal. And, and, you know, I don't want to be racist about this, but do you know anybody there that speaks English? And uh, I, I'll tell you, though, I did have a bad time once. I, I, I it was with the cable or something. And I called the cable company, and I get this guy who comes on like talking like this and telling me, blah, 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 blah. and I said, uh, "Pardon me, but what country are you in?" He says, "I'm in Arizona." <laughs> 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 Turned 
anybody was no and in fact i don't even think it was arizona i think it was long island you know wow. i mean it was just somebody who didn't speak very well you know so um maybe they go uh, this is kind of a big enough accent that we can hire him for customer support uh yes jeff <laughs> Uh, turn on your turn on your microphone, Jeff. My my wife's uh, grandmother used to say, "Speak United States." Speak United States. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's uh, it's uh, wonderful. You know, there used to be a time when all customer support was here. You know, I had friends who who worked in Silicon Valley, and a lot of them made a very nice living doing customer doing support. Yeah. And these guys were also nerds, so they would really help somebody. They, they knew what the technology was. The, the new guys who answer the phone don't know the technology. They've just got a little manual in front of them. And if you say, mm -hmm. such and such isn't working, they go to the, they type in on their computer, such mm -hmm. and such isn't working. And then all they do is they j just get an answer they don't even understand. You know, yeah, it's and, a flow chart. Yeah. Yeah, they have a flow chart they follow. It, when if you say yes, they go this way. If you say no, they go this way. Yeah, so, I, I I would just like I don't know. I guess I I guess I'm an old fart, right? You know. Uh, yes, Jeff. I, I think the older uh, programs, I'll, I'll say, <laughs> 20, 30 years ago, mm -hmm. the whole concept was much less sophisticated. It was very simplified. Yeah, and therefore it was easy to answer the questions because. You only had seven questions. Yeah. Now you got 3,000 questions. Well, yeah, but, you know, uh, it, it, you know, it's the idea that these people really don't know anything. And they're just told a process to go through. I, and, and that's not what I call customer support, you know. And the reason they gave up on all those nerds down in Silicon Valley was they could do it cheaper by farming it yeah. out to India. You know, Absolutely. or customer support in Bangladesh. I don't know. Somebody... And, it, and it's not even that they don't have smart people there that can do it. They mm -hmm. don't want to pay even there. They, they, the, the, the way they have it designed is they have figured out 95% mm -hmm. of the problems could be answered using the flow chart. And so it, the ones that can't, then they have to spend a little money and get some people who understand. Well, let's go to the extreme. Let's go to the extreme of customer support. And that's uh, something like Skype, where they don't even have a phone number you can call. They don't even have a chat room you can go, a chat line you can go to. You've got to go to like an FAQ thing and hope that your answer is there because they don't want to fucking talk to you. I got to tell you, folks, Microsoft is mean. They're nasty. What they've done to us and the people who love Skype and so on in their silence is just absolutely brutal, you know? And they should eat shit and fucking die. <laughs> and with that, my Skype will now collapse. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm sorry. You can't say that Microsoft can eat shit and die. You can say a lot of other things on Skype, but you can't say that. You know. <laughs> Somebody wrote a thing on one of the, you know, I'm going around the web looking for answers to my Skype question, which I still don't have an answer to. And none of you seem to have come up with it. And usually Rob has an answer or somebody. Um, but I, I still can't figure out how I, how I get people in a group. That's my biggest problem. Uh, I have a way of putting their pictures on once I get them. But anyway, so uh, uh, I, I go online. And one guy wrote, and he wrote quite nicely so, uh, on the Microsoft thing. I knew the day that Microsoft bought Skype. It would be five years to the date that they would fuck it up. <laughs> and that's pretty much their modus operandi over there at Microsoft, right? I mean, how's this company kept its doors open all these years? I think they bought Skype for the name. Really? I really do. I believe they bought Skype because they were calling Skype for business, right? Because uh -huh. it's a recognized name. Uh -huh. I think that they, they bought Skype because Skype for business is not Skype. It's what was called Link. It's a, a Microsoft product that used to come originally with uh, the Exchange server mm -hmm. and then with their communication server. 
and now they call it Skype for Business. Is it, is it? Do they still have Skype for Business? I thought they collapsed that. Yeah, they still have Skype for Business, and we—that's what we use on my job. We use Skype for Business, but it's really not Skype. It's a completely separate system. It looks completely they just different. The name. Yeah, they, yeah, I think they just wanted the name, and they keep Skype regular Skype going because it's. But it's a completely different technology. Could I put a group together easy with it? <laughs> no. No. Oh, it requires, it requires uh, a master's degree. No, well, it, just, it requires, um, uh, you know, an administrator. Yeah. You know, yeah, it, it, you, I, I, I don't know if you guys have ever felt this way, but there are days where I have just said to myself, I don't need this anymore. I'm just, I just got to stop it all because every day it's another little technical glitch or problem or something that doesn't work right or or whatever and that takes another hour two hours out of my life mm -hmm. and 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 why don't I just pull the plug and just say to hell with it you know I mean um, maybe the Luddites had a, had a good idea in the first place you know uh, but anyway. So anyway, we don't have uh, Phil here tonight, so you're free to talk about our lousy fucking <laughs> asshole motherfucking <laughs> cocksucking president uh, who uh, is a traitor to his country. So uh, anybody have a comment? Oh, 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 tonight we can talk freely without inciting <laughs> Phil into some kind of diatribe, huh? Oh, well. There's nothing really new. Yeah. Well, what's new is uh, what's old is new again, is what well, it keeps actually, happening. Actually, there is something new. CNN is reporting that the Mueller investigation could end by mid next week. Wow. 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 And then we are stuck with this new guy. What's his name? Uh, mm. The new uh, uh, attorney general. Right. Uh, deciding well, uh, what he's going to release of the Mueller report. Because it's, we'll it, it's at his behest. What happens is Mueller doesn't release a report. In other words, he doesn't send it off to the printing bureau and they have him print up a bunch of them so he can pass them out. He sends it to the attorney general. The attorney general is the one who finally publishes the report, either in a redacted form or in any form that he wants to, leaving out the things he doesn't consider important. Right. But we'll never see it then. Well, I don't know. I mean, it depends on how honest this new guy is, you know. I think it'd be a real big backlash if they don't release it. So I think it'll be released. Plus, uh, you do at least have a democratically controlled House of Representatives right now that could sue right. to have the entire thing released. You know, I think there's a decent chance if it wasn't, they could probably take that action. Yeah. They probably what I would assume. Yeah. But, and especially considering the fact that some of them, I would think, are going to be entitled to the full report, you know, members of the Intelligence Committee or, you know, at least a couple. Yeah. I mean, all it's got to do is take one top ranking Democrat to see the, you know, the, the quote unquote cover up, you know, or whatever. I mean, it, so, I mean, I don't think they're going to be able to, you know, to hide it because, I mean, uh, and if nothing else, I almost feel like, don't you guys feel like if nothing else, if that were to happen? that uh, somebody in the Justice Department that had a copy would probably leak it and risk their career? Yes. I think yeah. it would. Uh, it'll get leaked. Yeah. Um, I, I, I mean, if it were like something definitive, I mean, if they had a smoking gun in there and, and they didn't, you know, release it, I, you know, I think someone would do that. Yeah. Um, uh, it, it uh, you know, I, I, they say it's not going to be as big a report as you think it's going to be. It's not like the Star Report, which was huge, was massive. Yeah. This thing they say is going to be pretty much to the point, you know. Yeah. And uh, I, I, who knows what Mueller has found out? I don't think it may not be as bad as we'd like it to be, but it may not be as good as Trump would like it to be. Okay. I think what's coming out of the Southern District of New York is probably going to be a little bit more of consequence to Trump. In, in what respect? Well, uh, that's the legal stuff. The other stuff is all political. Mm -hmm. Right. All yeah. of this stuff is all everything Mueller's doing. All of this 
is political? Are they going to, uh, you know, are they going to uh, indict a sitting president? The question about mm-hmm. that, whether or not that goes back to, uh, the, would it be the Supreme Court to determine if that's the case? Or would that be just the policy from uh, the, ju- the Justice Department? I don't yeah. know. But uh, what's coming out of the Southern District of New York is legal. And you know, there's, what, is his son, uh, you know, Eric? Uh, my qu- my question is, or? though, my question is, though, can somebody like the uh, Southern District of New York uh, charge the president with something? Or do they have to wait till he's no longer president? You know, how about if it's not how about if it's not the president? What happens if it's the president's family? Oh, I would love to yeah. see. I would love I to see sure exactly. I would love to see. And, those and guys. I'll tell you what, he's so concerned that he went to the AG and he told the AG to put one of his. He's there's a guy in New York who was a, was yeah. on the worked in the campaign, and um, he asked him to put him in charge of the Southern District of, of New York investigation, which he recused himself. The AG recused himself. Oh, really? He did the right yeah. thing. Uh-huh. But Trump's worried about that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think it's, I think it's been pretty clear for a long time. If you ask me, that he is a, a very, very likely tax evader, a money launderer, yeah. and uh, you know, sometimes wise guy. I mean. <laughs> you know, I mean well, if just a sensible person looked at it and you could remove your political bias from it, you know, I mean, if this were an episode of Law and Order, we'd be ready to lock the guy if, up, if right? He, if he isn't a wise guy, right. if he isn't a wise guy, he does a very good impression of one, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's that's pretty much my take on it. I mean, just uh, the whole thing that he did with Michael Cohen, threatening yeah. him, threatening his father-in-law, um, and, and that's why Michael Cohen hasn't testified yet. He's postponed twice. Yeah. He's scared shitless. Uh, Cohn just got uh, the judge to push up his date of going to jail uh, yeah. because he had a broken arm or something like that, and he wants it to heal. And he, he and also because he may be you know testifying before Congress. Uh, I just wonder, you know, if I were Cohn, though, I mean, what I'd want him to say, look, don't don't put it off. In fact, make it closer. I want to just get it over with, you yeah, know. Because how long is he realistically going to spend in jail anyway? You know? I don't know. The anticipation has got to be worse. I think three years is the sentence, isn't it? Something like that. And with good behavior, he could be off in 30 days. I don't know <laughs> what the, what the, what they, how they do that thing. But, you know. Um, uh, well, I have plenty of time to run his book in prison. <laughs> yes. Yes. I mean, I'm. I'm, I'm sure that's what's coming. I mean, I would have to think that after all this is done and over with and he's out of all the entrapments of the lawyers and he's free and clear, I yeah. mean, that's his ticket back to having some money. I mean, I'm sure it's to write a book, I would Yeah, think. and, and uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, who's the other guy? The uh, the, uh, uh, the guy who makes the Nixon sign all the time. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, Roger Stone. Stone. Roger Stone uh, is going to write his book in prison. It's going to be called Mein Kampf. And yeah. it's, uh, <laughs> you know. Uh, they, that I, guy's a piece of shit. I'm what? Sorry, what? That guy's a piece Stone's of shit. Stone's a piece of shit, but I somehow find him fascinating. <laughs> you know? Because the man has absolutely no morals whatsoever. Yeah. You know? And he is he is fearless. He puts up the judge's picture with a, uh, uh, what do you call it, crosshairs next to it. Yeah. You may as well do this. Yeah. Well, I think there's a, there's a method to that madness. I mean, if you tell the judge to fuck himself enough times and you put a target up with his face on it and, you, and, and then he says, don't talk to the press and you talk to the press... By the time it goes to court, you could probably get that judge thrown out because he's prejudiced against you. You know, he I think that, that I, already. I, huh? No, I think he tried that. Yeah, yeah. And the judge said, "No way." No, but the, if you have a chance, if you have Netflix, there's a documentary called "Get Me Roger Stone," and it's fascinating. It is just absolutely fascinating. You walk away being fully entertained by the guy. Yeah. But not liking him, but fully entertained by him. 
he's a he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a showman if nothing more and he loves what's going on right now he loves being arrested he loves he he was an unindicted co-conspirator in Watergate did you know that yes. and and he loved that because he was a kid at the time and he said I love being a part of this I'm I'm glad they thought enough of me to make me an unindicted co-conspirator <laughs> You know, so well, he's got a gag order, order on him, so he can't speak, he can't uh, do his show, he can't do anything. Is that is that legal, uh, Josh? Do you know a lot something about this kind of stuff? Is that legal yeah, to they, tell somebody that he can't yeah. talk to the press? That he yeah, he, sure, they can get yeah. a court order to uh, you know impose an, an order on sometimes on both sides, the prosecution and the defense. Uh, what do I mean? It usually applies to all sides, as far as I know. I mean, just to be able to uh, in high profile cases to stop basically you know what you can call like legal jury tampering you know polluting yeah. the jury pool or whatnot i mean you know basically he's out there every night you know on a tv channel telling his story and the prosecution's not you know because that's not what you know the prosecution you know does in this country or or should do and yeah and, and you know it's just it's like a constant one-way uh, you know, just one way microphone that people only hear his side of the story for months at a time before the trial ever starts. Yeah. Now, Paul Manafort's probably going to prison for the rest of his life at the rate yeah, that's he's... going. You know, and and he, you know, he might get a pardon from uh, from uh, Trump, but Trump better be president when he needs that pardon. I... That's the problem. I just I can't believe how many people that have rubbed shoulders with. <laughs> Trump and have now ended up basically in the in the dumpster. Yeah, I, I mean it has to be like the biggest regret of their life, and, and I don't understand why there are still yet seemingly so many people openly willing to to still kiss his ring. I mean, I, I guess I misunderstood or mis, or underestimated how you know power hungry Americans really are. I guess I mean there's some people in this country apparently are so desperate. To sit in the same room as the the throne king that I you know I just that right. they'll do anything. Well, let me, let me let me let me let me bring this up, and I may be wrong on this, but I don't think so. I think there were more con more uh, convictions and indictments, more indictments of people associated with an administration under Reagan than there have been under Trump. I think Reagan had uh, had an amazing what? amount of them. What? There were a bunch under Reagan, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it, it seems as though this this really looks like a New York uh, street gang. It's the kind of thing that Giuliani used to uh, prosecute when he was <laughs> with the Southern District yeah. of New York. Yeah. I mean, it's just it's just so funny though that if if all these people had not hooked up with him, they could have just continued on, you know, laundering their money and yeah. you know making their way in life and you know wearing their million dollar suits or whatever and you know and then yet they got so desperate for like you know 15 minutes in the spotlight or whatever and now what, what do any of them have to show for it i mean they're all going to jail well why all would it, you know why would anybody want to have anything to do with trump i mean it really power it, 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 but did, he never had power he wanted well, wanted you to think he had power but really he was a failed businessman and the well, I was talking about him as president because him as a businessman, you're 100 percent correct. The yeah. NFL didn't want him. They they colluded to keep him out. Things were NFL. so bad for him that no bank would loan him money in this country. And the reason he loves Russia is Russia was loaning him money. Mm. OK, so, you know, uh, the, the Russians were saving his ass. Uh, this is a failed businessman, but you know the yachts out in out in buttfuck mm. doesn't know that. They watch him on television and say, "Oh, that's the guy from The Apprentice. He's a multi-billionaire. He knows how. You know, he's a businessman." Mm -hmm. And they what they did is fuck. What's his name? Burnett, the guy who produced the show. Fuck him. Mark, what yeah. he did is he set this guy up to be president of the United States with good lighting. I think unwittingly. You know, did though, you ever watch that show and see the way they would uh, they would light him and so on, so that he he looked uh, just almost godlike in his presence? 
you know. Uh, just amazing. Just amazing. Uh, hello, yeah. Bree. Bree's calling us from Dubai. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, Alex. How are you doing tonight? Uh, today? I'm here to defend Trump. You're here to defend Trump. Well, we'll go, have at it. I don't know how, how you can possibly do it, but well, uh, first I got to put you on hold, Alex, and I got to get your special pin from you. Well, uh, <laughs> very good. And yeah. then I got to pass you to the number twos, and eventually you'll reach Phil. Yeah. Well, no, I'll tell you what happened with the with the pin number. They actually do a thing where they put a thing on. That uh, that you put they put the pin in and it says that's secure. Now how do I know it's secure? <laughs> you know, yeah. and I don't care if anybody has my pin number. I don't care if anybody wants to steal my identity because you know they can have no life. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, um, um, Marjorie got her identity stolen because her wallet, which she lost was found by somebody because they tried to use her Gap card. And then they tried to, I don't know, change the address on the Gap card. But they didn't try the uh, the uh, the uh, credit cards. And I think the reason for that is most people, if they're even partially smart, know the minute that somebody loses their wallet, the first thing they do is cancel all oh, their okay. cards. Goodbye. You know? Yeah. Well, I have any time any purchase is made on my cards, I get an SMS. Like within seconds. Yeah. So I know, you know, and there's a thing on there. I can just click the link if it's not, if I didn't do it. Well, if I lost my American Express card, uh, I do immediately get an SMS every time I use it within seconds. Um, uh, but I don't know. I'm beginning to think that when, I, well, I'm, I'm going to start, uh, I'm going to lower the amount of things I have in my wallet. And keep them somewhere else yeah. mm -hmm. and just the ones yeah. i absolutely need and have to use on a given day that's what i'll keep in my wallet i don't need my american express card it's on my apple uh in my apple wallet i don't need my uh um bank card because it's in my apple wallet on my iphone so uh well, alex if you traveled as much as i did mm -hmm. yeah you would develop i have three different wallets yeah. For three different purposes. Yeah. You know? and, well, I have, I, I even have I, wallet. yeah, I have two, uh, one wallet for all my normal purchases and the other wallet for the hookers. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, all the ones I know take cards, right? Uh, no, but uh, you were going to defend Trump. You said, Bree. Well, yeah. I mean, in general, go ahead. I was also going to, I was also going to tell you that, I, you know, in terms of your uh, customer support uh, sis, uh, situation there with your uh, GoDaddy, yeah. I've got that beat because I had a phone that I bought recently on AliExpress and I had to return it. Mm -hmm. And I, I actually did a whole video on this on YouTube. It's like it runs 40 minutes just about how absurd the process was. And eventually I, I got some of the money back, but not after... Uh, massive delays being cursed at from the seller and threatened uh being harassed by the seller uh having uh evidence falsified fabricated by the seller you know so that's far worse you know it's, it's, i i've got to I, you know what i gotta do is the next time i call go daddy i'm gonna do it on skype okay i'm gonna use the phone system on skype and I'm going to just video, you know, video the whole thing. Yes. And then I'm going to, <clears throat> yep. uh, once I've uh, done it, I'm going to put it up. I'm going to say, this is how yeah. bad GoDaddy service is. On, on YouTube, make sure your headline is, um, you know, GoDaddy service is slower than ever. Exclamation, exclamation, exclamation point. Yeah. You know, you have to have some kind of a title that yeah. is, you know. Well, anyway. the thing is, I, I use the chat today because if I don't use the chat, I have to listen to their fucking music. And their music is so bad that you can actually go online and somebody has archived it. Uh, so, so they say, if you ever miss GoDaddy, here's the one song they keep playing over and over and yeah. over and I, over. I know the, the, the malls around here uh, play the same songs. Really? And uh, Yeah, and um, like they're instrumental versions, but then they'll have these little hooks in them. And I automatically know them. So I whistle them just while I'm walking down the hall and people will look over. I don't know what it is that, I don't know if you know this, but not everybody can whistle. 
That's right. I, I I'm, not, I'm not this very good at it. This is a rare talent for me here. I'm not very good at it. Is that right? I can't even do it anymore. I can whistle three, to, three or four different ways. Really? Okay, go ahead. Yeah. All right, well, with the lips. And I can do it with my teeth. I can... Uh, this is a fun one. When I'm in a quiet room or big room, I can sound like a bird. <laughs> and people will look around like where the bird is, you know. And then I can whistle with my tongue. You know, so... I can't I whistle. I didn't realize that not everybody can do you this. See, I'm trying right now. I can't. Well, I used to I, be I able to. Pitch. I've lost my ability to whistle. Boy, all everything's going. The whistling, yeah, you... the penis, they're all going, you know? <laughs> well, Alex. Okay, so <clears throat> defending Trump. I'm defending Trump. Yeah. Uh, how do we go from mall music to uh, Trump? One of them is the lady is a tramp. Uh, that's... Okay, but wait, 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 wait a minute. But that's you're not defending. You're not defending Trump by saying okay, the lady right. is a tramp. Here's my here's my defense of Trump, and uh, because Phil is not here, um, in terms of okay, well you can you can pick any topic, and I'll I'll, I'll rationalize it or tell you why I think it's. Oh, okay. oh well, I'll, I'll tell you what I got something here. This is this is good. Well, go ahead. Uh, I okay, mean, what so, you what you're going to try and do is be the devil's advocate, right? Overall, I have to say that I like that he di he is a disruptor. Now, you can argue that this is bad for the country, but I don't know. Sometimes you need a president to say things and do things that others are not willing to do. One of the things I think he, he sends a message, basically, don't try to come into our country illegally. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's a good message. Um, you know, a lot of the countries out there that are doing well now, yeah. they basically say you can only come in if you add to our economy and if you're a good uh, civil person. So if you don't add to our, our country and if you're not a civil person, then you're going to go out. And uh, I think that's, you know, that's fair enough. You know, to, to say something like that. Yeah, but that's not and what he. That's not what. That's not what he's saying. Good. If he were coming from the uh, the area of, uh, of of trying to get a better class of people coming into the country, you know, you could argue that. But it's the mean mm -hmm. way in which he does it. You know, it, it he doesn't do it in a civil, decent way, and you don't feel he is doing it because he wants to protect America. Yes, uh, Rob. All right, I got one for, for Bree. Yeah. Okay. Charlottesville, Virginia. There are good people on both sides. Defend. <clears throat> you had to pick the one that probably... <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I, yeah, because I didn't follow that. Uh, you know, I'm not in the States. Um, but here's the thing. Uh, so, all right, I'll tell you then what it was. You know, we had that we had that horrible situation where right. the white supremacists went and they infiltrated Charlottesville, Virginia, and um, they met up with obviously uh, some opposition there. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a little bit of violence, and there was a, a girl who was killed because <clears throat> one of these nuts backed his car down the street at high speed, and he and he ran somebody over. Okay, Trump Trump did not Trump did not. Um, Everybody was calling for him to come out and uh, and condemn what happened. Yeah, he waited. He waited. He didn't do anything. Finally, he said, "Well, you know, a lot went on over there, and there are good people on both, you know, sides, and all this." Well, now, what what when he said that, what was his perception of what a side was? In other words, well, there was the for him, there's Democrats and Republicans, so. Maybe he, you know, he on that day it could have been uh, that he was thinking in, in, you know, in those terms, like that it, it had become political, and there were there were people from Not, he was talking about the parties that were on both sides. He was talking about the so, people on he was talking about the people on at the at the uh, at the rally on both the sides. Nazis. He was talking about the Nazis, <clears throat> and he was talking about those who were there to say, you know, we oppose well, you. So I think. I think he didn't really understand the situation, and he was trying to be. A well, you know, you know, he was you, job on you, you, you know, Bree, uh, you're president of the United States. Uh, you should understand 
the problem and the situation and the nuances well, see, of various things, thing or saying. keep your fucking mouth shut. You know, <laughs> one president can't know everything. I think we need three. Well, don't try and tell that to Donald no. Trump because no. he thinks that uh, <laughs> you know he knows everything. Yes, Rob. So give me another. I, one. I would say to you about not having to knowing about everything. If this was immediate after it happened, you'd say, okay, well he didn't know. This was what a, two, a day and a half, two days after. Yeah. Well, the and event. that's the key. That's the key. That's when a lot, so many other people come into the discussion. People on the the outside who don't really understand. I mean, for example, um, there's this case of uh, this. I don't know if it's an actor, or a gay black guy. Oh, oh, who, oh, oh, yeah, no, oh, it's a big talking. story so here. As soon as that big happened, story here. All these people came in and said, "Wow, this is terrible. This is this is crazy, crazy." And then something happened where he well, there was one, there was one person I know that so did, wait, 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 Bree, uh, Bree, Bree. There was one person yeah. I know that didn't feel immediately that uh, that situation was real who was that me <laughs> i said it here okay. on the air these guys will back so me up people on both sides no but the uh, the, no. the point i'm making is I mean, <laughs> the thing with this kid uh, um uh, who's in a lot of trouble now <laughs> in a lot of trouble um uh the problem there was that a lot of people immediately jumped to his defense. Oh, it's horrible. Only in America could this happen. You know, the Spike Lees of the world were doing this. Okay. And wait a minute, let me, let, me, let me finish what I'm saying. And, okay. and, um, no, I I, I, and, and even Nancy Pelosi, I think, wrote a tweet uh, condemning it, and now she hasn't said anything. And a lot of people are decrying that, saying that the, the media was ready to believe this kid. Jussie, I think is his name. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, he, uh, uh, that they were ready to believe him immediately without any question. And I started to think about it and I thought, well, that's not the worst thing. I mean, obviously it's a knee jerk reaction and you feel he's gay. So you got to stand up for that. And he's black and you got to stand up for that. It had all the little numbers ticked off, uh, in, in it, uh, but then I started to think about it, and I went, you know, Nancy Pelosi wrote it because she really believed it happened, because Jussie made the world believe it happened. And so she was reacting to what was perceived to have happened. And in that, she wasn't really wrong. You know, and the people who came uh, to the defense of Jussie and, of, uh, and against the situation were really coming out against the situation as they perceived it to be, not as in the end it turned out to be. Well, we, Rob, okay, you had so, your hand up. So, oh, well, sorry. Rob so, had his I mean, hand up. That's the thing. Yeah, Rob had his hand up. Rob? I was going to say, maybe he did us all a favor. Um, maybe by, by, by coming out and doing what he did, maybe now we'll slow down a little bit and not just rush to judgment on all of these things. It was sort of a smack in the face saying, you know what? Not not every one of them is is true. Well, what's strange is it looked phony baloney to me from the very beginning. Uh, I didn't, you know, and I I kind of felt bad about saying that because again, you know, the guy's gay and he's black, and God forbid it should have really happened. But somehow it just didn't seem like there was anything to make it believable. Yes, Charlie. Well, you know, he still denies that he paid these guys to do that. He still denies that it's a false report. Well, what's he going to say? That's the Trump playbook. I know, but I'm just saying the whole yeah. story's not in yet. He hasn't been arrested. He's yeah. facing a felony Those charge. Still haven't even gone before the grand see, jury yet. For me, this is a non-story because it, you know, and we get caught up in that, and and Trump plays on those things, and yeah. you know, for the most part, I'd say like 90 percent of what people, well, maybe not that high, maybe like 70 percent of what people complain about Trump, it doesn't really matter. Uh, you know, and you just get caught up in his game. Well, the guy who controls it. Trevor Noah, who does The Daily Show now, supposedly said something. I didn't see the thing, but he supposedly said that this was this uh, whole Jesse, I can't try to remember his last name now. Smollett. Huh? Jesse Smollett. Smollett. Uh, situation uh, is something that would make uh, Trump very happy because it's a way for him to point at the press and call them yes. fake news. You know, exactly. Uh, yeah. And and um, 
you know, I mean, I think what Smala did was was terrible. But I don't think the reaction was from a point of, of. I mean, let's face it. He made he he taught he created a situation which was purely believable in today's America. Yeah. Okay. And I think that's the thing that we're not understanding here. We can't hate the press. We can't hate uh, um, uh, these people who were like Spike Lee and so on who went, oh, you see, because it does exist in America. That's what made it so believable. Uh, well, if people have you know, been attacked at Trump rallies. He's got it on film. Yeah. But I mean, uh, but gays are getting attacked all the time. Black gays are going to be attacked even worse. You know, and so you when you hear heard that story initially, it you know you didn't doubt it, but then when I heard more about it, it, I started to doubt it because it just didn't seem to make any sense. What they don't have any cameras that shot this in a city that's got more cameras than uh, 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 than iPhones. <laughs> was that in Chicago? Yeah, it was in yeah, Chicago. Yeah, that's what didn't ring true either. I mean, I don't think if Chicago is MAGA country, there's not a lot of Trump supporters there. Plus, I mean, I, I had trouble with it when I heard that because it's like, well, three guys in Chicago got into a scuffle and not one of them had a gun. I mean, this guy be the <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that, that that too. Oh, I mean, you know that too. Yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, but it, it, by the way, Fox has not, to say, has not yet said they're going to fire, uh, Jesse Smollett, just Jesse Smollett. Yeah. Uh, uh, apparently they, uh, they're not ready to rush to that kind of, uh, decision, which well, good for them, well, good for them, uh, you know. good for them. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think what he if if he if this did happen this way it's terrible it it took resources away from the police department in chicago where they need every resource they can have you know they say he faces felony charge of disorderly conduct wow but these other guys these other guys don't get charged and here's the reason why because they didn't the only guilt that smollett has in this is that he made the claim yeah, and filed a false police report. Now, these guys didn't do anything. They were in on this little plot. But if it was just a matter of getting it on video and then showing it to the world or something, that would be one thing. But they, he actually went to the police and filed a, you know, a report. And that is illegal. And so that's why he's guilty and they're not. Mm -hmm. You know. So... so um, you know, Alex... The, the other thing is, there are policies that Trump has and things he has done that you have said you agree with, uh, in fact, even on this show today. And yet, <clears throat> why aren't we talking more about those? Well, wait, 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 wait. What did I say on today's show that he did that was good? And by the way, I still stand by my claim that a stop clock is right twice a day. You know, that that yeah, he, this well, guy can fuck up and, and work overtime to try and fuck up, and eventually he's going to do something right. But here's the thing. I don't, when I hear Trump news, I don't go into it with the preconceived idea that he is that way. Yeah, but you words, see, I, guess here, I, I, I don't mean disrespect here, Bree, but you're sitting over there in Dubai. We're having to put up with this shit. Yeah. Well, we put up with it a little bit here because he caused the whole Saudi Qatar thing, you know. And yeah. I, I don't like that because I can't fly Qatar Airways anymore, and that was that was a cheap cheaper option for. Why me can't you fly time. Qatar? What what happened with that? Well, he came over here and he said, you know, there's there's stuff going on. We got to figure out who's right, who's wrong. And then after he left Saudi Arabia, you know, Trump basically gave them the power in the region. He basically said, you guys do what you want to do. I'm, I got your back. This is all going to be good. Mm -hmm. And so then Saudi said, oh, you know, Qatar's not playing around, not doing well with us. So, you know, they, they're the bad people in this area. And then it was a rift. If Trump hadn't said anything or if he hadn't come here, I don't know that we would necessarily well, have well, that rift that we well, have today. Let me ask you the relationship of Dubai to Qatar, okay? Uh, it, 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 they're all part of the Arab Emirates? No. No. I know. Yeah. I mean, I'm not the best person to. Uh, yeah, but you live there, so you relationship. you know the relationship between them. It's very bad right now. Yeah. Um, 
I can't. Eat, well, how eat how does how does how does Dubai uh, feel towards Qatar the same way? I mean, do they side with the Saudis? That it's more complicated because here there are you know seven different Emirates. It's kind of like you asking how does New York feel about the wall and how does New Mexico feel about the wall and how does how do people in Montana feel about the wall? Like there would be different. There would be a different like, perception. Yeah. 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 Yeah, but <clears throat> nevertheless, so, what, anyway. I'm, what I'm saying is, let's say Saudi Arabia were to go to war against somebody in the region, Jordan or whatever, okay? Well, they are at war with Yemen. With Yemen, okay. So what side would Dubai be on in that fight? Would they be siding with the Saudis? Would they be siding with the Yemenis? Or would they just be keeping their options open? Uh, officially, they would side with the Saudis, mm -hmm. and then also officially, they would send as much aid packages as they could to anybody affected in Yemen. So they would try to support the Yemenis by giving them donations. You know, that's very nice. To help the... mm -hmm. That's very nice. Yeah. So that's they try to, you know, see it both ways. Wow! Wow! That's terrific! That's terrific! Um, the, the, um, I have a couple uh, the, the, the trade with China. I think Trump is, I, you know, he has done some things that in, in those cases, I think that we were getting the short end of the stick. And I, I do think he, I don't know if it's net positive, but I think him calling that out and saying, we're not going to pay this much for that, or we're not mm -hmm. going to lose that much money for that. I think those are good things, but you're right. The way that he does it. Yeah. Sometimes very crap. Charles, you have your hand up. Yeah, um, that's one thing that Trump demonstrates his ignorance about is he thinks that he's helping the situation with these tariffs. He thinks we're collecting money from China because of these tariffs. But what we're doing is collecting money from our own people because we have to pay the tariff. The Chinese don't pay the tariff. The people who buy the product. That's right. The tariff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 the it. only thing, the only thing that I said that I heard that Trump was for, and I and I I laud him for this, and that is uh, that he feels that uh, we should be paying the same price for drugs in the United States as a Canadian pays for it in Canada. Um, which I he hasn't I, done I anything I, to do that? Huh? He hasn't done anything. To no, make he that hasn't. Take. No, he hasn't. But he tells everybody who will listen to him that that's what he would like to do. So why is it he can put all his energy behind something as stupid as the wall, which is just a terrible, ridiculous idea, and, and, and not do something like that, which would truly benefit Americans, you know? Well, because all Americans would probably be in favor of that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he, he doesn't serve all Americans. I mean, let's, I mean... I well, call the way I see it. I mean, let's be real. Trump well, serves angry white people. I mean, does he wake up in the, every morning and go, "What can I do off do today to piss off the people who aren't my base?" Right, and and but his base are angry white people. I mean, and I live in the heart. I mean, I live in a county okay. where yeah. Trump is a. I mean, Trump's a ninety percent guy here. I mean, if I live in a housing development with two hundred houses. 199 of them would put a Trump sign in the yard. I would be the guy without one. I mean, you know, I'm just... So I mean, I what, what, are they, what are they angry about, okay? I mean, I know things you can be angry about, but I want to know what they're angry about because it can't be the well, same things I'm angry about. I mean, listen, we live in a pretty rural area, but we're about 25 miles uh, from a pretty large metropolitan city in Columbus, Ohio, which, mm -hmm. you know, some people might laugh at. But, I, I mean, last I was told, it's the 15th largest city in America. I mean, it's actually pretty heavily populated. And this area has a ton of industry. Mm -hmm. And, you know, <clears throat> look, just like anywhere else, you know, 35 years ago, an uneducated white male could go get a job in a factory or whatever, kind of like, I, I was still able to do, and they made a lot of money. And now all that industry has gone by the wayside. You know, Columbus is basically, uh, it's gone down some um, in, in way before Trump, but, you know, in the mid-90s, let's say, mm -hmm. it was overrun with um, Mexican immigrants. I shouldn't say overrun because that makes it sound like 
you know, I didn't like it or, or whatever. But I'm just saying, you know, a lot of Mexican uh, immigrants moved to the area at the time. Um, later on, Columbus, Ohio became the largest uh, area in the United States of uh, Somalian uh, refugee. I mean, the, you know, they they sunk into isolationist thinking. I mean, because a lot of the jobs went away because of things like trade and union mm -hmm. busting and stuff. That's how a guy, I mean, it's how a guy like Sherrod Brown has been elected to the U.S. Senate here, you know, what, three times now, which is why I've said before, it is possible for a sensible person who doesn't act like a complete fucking idiot to get elected in states like this, like Ohio and Pennsylvania and Wisconsin. <clears throat> Trump was just the first person with the big microphone to come out and, you know, say it, and then he did it in sort of a lambasting way that, you know, people... <laughs> People like that, right? I mean, uh, you know, they were, you know, ready for something else, apparently, from what we all gathered. But, I mean, they're angry about a lot of that stuff. I mean, mm -hmm. and like I was saying before, I, I will be honest and be real. The race issues in, these, in this country has greatly improved from, you know, a century ago and two centuries ago or whatever. Mm -hmm. But it's not there. I mean, I, I told you guys before, I still grew up in a home where... Uh, at a Thanksgiving dinner or whatever, the word nigger could come out. And, I mean, there wouldn't be people with, you know, open mouths. Oh, my God, what did you... I mean, everyone just kept pouring their drink or eating their... I mean, it wasn't a big... You know, I mean, not everyone felt that way. Well, well, it, you know, I mean, you know, uh, the fact the that they... of this country is just... The, the fact that they... And I think Charlie would agree with me on this, having... Mm -hmm. Since he is a person of the black persuasion... Uh, that that uh, the way in which you used that word at the dinner table wasn't meant to hurt anybody. You know, uh, a lot of times that word was used to hurt. Uh, now, it's just that any use of that word is considered, you know, <coughs> for both. But, I mean, I guess what I'm saying is there are still parts of this country where it's still, this country has always been and continues to be very tribal. Not not just in politics. I mean, we yeah. live in a rural area, farm community. Mm -hmm. We don't like the people from Columbus. No, I'm not moving to Columbus. You know, I mean, I'm just telling you, this is what someone around here might say. There's no way I'm moving up there, sitting in all that traffic and living with all them niggers. Uh, I mean, you know, it's still yeah. rural yeah. versus, yeah. you know... Uh, you know, large metropolitan cities. Well, at least I mean, they at least they didn't jobs. at least they didn't say kikes. Okay, so I you know I feel safe for the time being. Charlie, how do you feel about that? You came from Texas. Now Texas is where I said I, I you know I came across the uh, the the N word constantly, and when I would yeah, call yeah. people on it, you know, and this was years ago, they would say, "Oh, well, that's just a term I use to describe them. I'm, I don't mean anything bad by it." How did you feel about it? Because you heard it a lot, I'm sure. Uh, actually, I, I lived in Austin for 43 oh, years. Oh, well, then that's Austin not that's not like... the liberal capital of America, I think. Yeah. So, no, I, I, there, there wasn't any of that in Austin. Uh, yeah, Austin. And I don't want people to... I don't want people to think that around here it's it's an everyday thing. I mean, there's not a weekly meeting of the Ku Klux Klan anywhere around here. Well, know, there was, there uh, was in Houston, Texas at the police department. So, uh, yeah. when I was there, so <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I'm just saying, but I, I guess I'm saying there isn't one yeah. that I'm aware of, but if, if I were in the locker room at work and someone came up and invited mm -hmm. me to one, I wouldn't also be shocked. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, it's like, you know, because, that's just it's yeah. like 50 50 i mean and i mean this is just with the jobs and the immigration yeah and, and the way people and so that's what they that, that's what they're fearful know? of that's what they're right. fearful. i mean they're just they're fucking white people are just fucking angry i mean they talk about angry black people it's like i don't know i mean they got a right to be angry sometimes just to fucking i mean i'm white i don't even understand white people so i mean <laughs> <laughs> uh brie brie held up a sign uh that uh, that uh, i don't know why he held it up but it was uh, thanking uh, OAC, um, uh, Alexandria, A AOC, Alexandria Casio cortez uh, for losing the 25,000 jobs at, at um, uh, Amazon. And, Bree, I will have to answer mm -hmm. that little sign or whatever it was. Yeah, oh, 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 is that, who's that? Is that? That is. I want to see the, these are the ones who have messaged me today. 
that want me to they say hi oh well that yeah i get those all the time and uh but these are real people alex yeah yeah <laughs> sure yeah, yeah sure sure yeah oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, what's interesting is that you keep them on your phone that's what i find I interesting i just woke up i'm going through the list <laughs> <laughs> no but the no, thing is Alex, look, you want i can explain why they messaged me well, and they're real wait, wait a minute well i'll tell you is it on facebook no oh it's through a messenger a wechat yeah well the reason why is in this city, a lot of uh, people come here to find jobs. It's like New York. Mm -hmm. And when they can't find a job, after a while, what do they do? They will become a waitress or, uh, you know, or a maid or something, you know, they'll become menial. Mm -hmm. So at a certain point, they realize that if they can go on dates or if they meet someone, they might be able to a get a place to stay mm -hmm. and b get at least get invited to dinner and have a free meal there are i would say every week i get at least a dozen no well, they can charge you $300 for a blow job <laughs> some of them probably are in that area but some are just people looking for friends uh, connections a way to get a job you know, so yeah. you never know. I don't respond to them. I, I wouldn't respond to them either. I mean, I get them on uh, whenever I, I fall under my 5,000 people that are on my Facebook page and there's an opening, I suddenly get this slew of women uh, mm -hmm. almost wearing nothing saying they want to be my friend, you right. know, and I go. Uh, and so I immediately find somebody on the list that wants to be <laughs> there so I can fill up that one slot so I don't keep getting that spam from them. But anyway, the point that I'm making is that you brought up the, the, the jobs of Am at Amazon. And quite frankly, for the most part here in New York, we're very happy that Amazon is not moving in. To Why be, is that? Well, uh, for several reasons. Number one, we have enough problems with crowded, traf with crowded uh, uh, subways and so on, especially going out to Queens without having that to add to it. Uh, that mm -hmm. it was going to add too much. And where were those people going to live? They weren't going to live in Queens. The kind of money that, that, that uh, uh, Amazon pays isn't enough that you could even live in, in New York City. So what are they going to do? Are they going to all commute to those jobs? Mm -hmm. Those jobs weren't, weren't really going to produce anything except a lot of headaches for the people of New York. And so most New Yorkers are happy that it... That, and, and also, you know, our mayor said something that w was kind of interesting. He assailed Amazon for just giving up too easily. That the, they didn't ask them not to be here. There were people protesting against it, okay? And then Amazon made the decision that, well, we just don't want to do it then. And he felt well, they, they go elsewhere. He felt they reneged on a deal is what he felt, actually. So, you know, but it was it was just not a practical thing to do. Plus the idea of Amazon finding a place to produce goods and services um, was uh, to have an infusion of income into, into certain communities that could use it. Columbus, Ohio, or Cleveland, Ohio could have used a, an Amazon uh, uh, center there. Uh, a lot of cities in the United States that, that actually went out and, and pitched uh, getting this uh, this yeah uh, they they applied here in Columbus as yeah fact. and Columbus could have used it uh, better and, and there better. be more people available and more housing available for those people than here in New York City which is congested already you know so that's the reason why Rob you know it just wasn't I don't know that I buy it but okay yeah uh, you because, know you know I kind of think of it as being a little short-sighted sort of the same way the New York Islanders left Long Island because uh, now that now that all that revenue is gone, all those hotels, all those businesses. Well, remember, remember, we didn't tell them they couldn't be here. They decided on their own because their people had a negative reaction to it that they were just going to pull up anchor and take off for some other port. You know? Yes, uh, Bree. Well, they probably figured out that they were going to have a tough future there. That you know, there there would be constantly under pressure to for by unions and and these kinds of things, 
And so they probably just saw that as a, uh, you know, a difficult time ahead. But, you know, it, this happened in, uh, in Pittsburgh for a while in the 90s, we had all the movie companies move in and they were all making films. And one of the reasons why was because we didn't have a union. And <clears throat> so later the union came and then the, the Hollywood production companies just pick another place. So you can keep, so AOC I think is right, but then, okay, does that mean that the Northern Virginian people are somehow crazy? Well, to begin with, to begin with that, like a, that note said AOC, and that's because they've got some kind of thing against her because she really had nothing to do with Amazon no. pulling up stakes in this deal. You know, she just, I think, made some remarks about how she thought it was great that they were not going to do it. But she didn't. Mm. She was not one of the leaders of the coalition to stop it from happening. You know, right? So, so. But she carries a lot of weight uh, in the media. Now, yeah. I don't know how much weight she will carry in legislation. Some people claim that she will be the one to get Trump reelected because she's a lightning rod that can be used in the media against that. So I don't know. You know, I do believe that AOC is pretty awesome that she genuinely cares uh, for the people she represents but at the same time she does represent one district she you know in new york yeah she's not yeah. going to be relatable to everyone everywhere and but, i don't think she i don't know. think she's trying to be i i think the only thing she is is she won this thing you know you got to realize she went up against a guy i think who had that post for i don't know how long and she went in there. She was just a bartender and decided for a hoot, I'll run. And somehow she got the uh, the nomination for the primary. And then she won the prime. She won the uh, the general election. Uh, That's the story. That's the story they want you to believe. Yeah. She was recruited. What do you mean she you, was you recruited? Saw the, you saw the documentary, right? No. Uh, she was her. recruited by the Justice Democrats. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, they had... Yeah, they had because over they because Crowley was a corporatist. No, I see. Okay. It, well, in any event, it still is one of those stories of somebody coming up from nowhere, and so she right. got a lot of publicity. Plus, the reason she got a lot of publicity, I have to say this, she's hot looking. You know, she's easy she's on the, the What what we gonna say, Rob? Spunky. She's got that. Yeah, yeah I mean, she, but she's hot, isn't she? I mean, she. You, you saw all these women in wearing white in in the State of the mm -hmm. Union address, and what was the who was the one who stood out? Her, that, you know. Fox News. That's why they love her. You know, she's got the look. Hmm. Yeah, they're gonna hire her as a commentator. Alex, I want to tell you, when I was in graduate school, uh, I dated someone almost exactly like AOC, but she was Korean instead of Puerto Rican. Okay. But I know exactly, exactly this uh, mentality of the of the uh, the democratic socialists. Mm -hmm. And this started back in the late 90s, early aughts, and they realized they understand communication theories and they realized what they had to do in order to get there into the conversation. AOC is a result of that almost 20 years of discussions, uh, pouring over th communication theory, pouring over what gets in the media and why, mm -hmm. and she was the result of that. Yeah. Well, she. Uh, it's not a bad thing. No, not a no, bad thing at all. Not at all. And as but a as a as a as a, as a democratic socialist, uh, I'm all for it. You know. So. Who are you going to listen to, Elizabeth Warren or AOC? Oh, AOC. Absolutely. You know. Uh, uh, hey, but let, let, by the way, let me let me bring something up. I mean, I've been over the last twenty four hours. I'm bothered by Bernie Sanders. Does anybody else feel the same way? No. I well, I feel no. I'll, I'll, let me then let me argue with not you. Not feeling Charles, the burn. Here, no, no. Here, I'm not feeling the burn, and I'll tell you why. Uh, the, one of the reasons why he was so effective back in the last election. Uh, was because he only had really one perceivable opponent, and that was Hillary Clinton. Now he's got a whole bunch of competition out there who have a lot of the same theories he does and prescribe to the same philosophies that he does. And I just don't think he's going to show up as well in the end. 
in this fine, no field problem. of people. But I mean, I just, I just think, hey, Bernie, you know, you didn't do it before. Let all these people have their shot now. That's my feeling on it. Yes, Jeff. Well, my attitude about Bernie is let him do whatever he wants to try. But part of the thing is, I, I, I looked the other day on, on the news, and it says that he had. 40% of the uh, Democrats money. Well, he got he got in one day, was it? Something like $6 yeah. million? Dollars? Yeah. I know. Yes, he did. That's how, and he got all from small donors, people like me. Yeah. People uh, and, but, and, and I understand people being excited about him and so on, but I, uh, to begin with, I don't think he could beat Trump. You know, I, I agree. beat Trump into the ground. Oh no! Because he stands for what people want. He stand. People don't like not having uh, health insurance, not having health. Oh, care. but yeah, but that's an that's an easy go because you know all the there are about five or six other people that are all for universal care uh, uh, who are running. Okay, um, there are some who don't think it's practical, but they're for it. You know, that's because they're idiots. The, Every other industrialized country has universal health care, and the, they have yes. Less but money the problem, the problem, Charles, is we never have, and so to go from what we have now to the complete opposite direction is not an easy jump for America to make all at once. You know, it's got to be something Even that's done in baby save steps. Us tons of money. Uh, uh, I, What's uh, going to pay for it though? <clears throat> That's the question. I mean, we're back. paying twice what Canada pays per person for health care. you got to realize that, for instance, England, when they went to, to their health care program, uh, did, it, did it right pay. after World War II. They decided they were going to give themselves a gift, and that was the gift they gave themselves for having gone through that war. Well, everything in England was decimated at that point. So you could start at ground, you know, at, at zero and work your way to a national health care program. Um, here, we have have so entrenched the way doctors do business, the insurance companies exist, the prescription, blah, 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 and we go on and on and on. And it's such an industry that to just automatically dismantle that is like tearing down several giant high rises. You know, it's, it's, I, I agree with you. What we need, and we need it now, is universal health care. But I don't know if practically it can be done that fast. Okay. Meanwhile, people are dying. Tens of no, I agree of with it. Hey, every year I'm, they don't hey, I'm, a, I'm an old fart who relies on my social security and my uh, my uh, after a uh, health program to keep me alive. All right, I'm very lucky. There, are, I if I didn't have that, I would have to pay that twenty percent. You know, and if I didn't, if I wasn't old enough, I wouldn't have any health care at all. All right. So I know exactly what you're talking about. And nobody in this country should have to ever worry about how they're going to pay for their medical bills because there's something wrong with them. It should be taken care of. That's what we do for each other. That's but why if, we're a country so that we but, help help each but other. But if people wanted this, why, as soon as uh, we got close to getting something, they voted uh, Republican, and we lost the House and the Senate, and and then we lost because, the president. Because Why? the pharmaceutical companies and the insurance, health insurance companies paid millions and millions of dollars to lie to people to make them believe that it was not in their best interest. I don't know. I, I, look, I, I, you know, Canada, Charlie, Charlie, you Charlie you're absolutely. Doctors, then we have to wait here. Charlie, you're absolutely That's right. I, I, I find it incomprehensible. That an average American would say he didn't want health free health care, or, oh, or they would love it, but they first single off, payer they don't trust the government. They don't want their government. They don't want the government. Oh, you gonna, they're going to have death panels, don't you know? The insurance company has death panels. Uh, of do course they do. Of course they, they do. They pay for operations for people and they die. Yeah. yeah. No, you're absolutely yeah, right. They're, Look, but they're you're... only going to kill white people because the government and the insurance companies love immigrants and black people yeah. <laughs> oh boy yeah. I mean hey, I've lived here my whole life but well, you know yeah, it's, yeah but I, at some I point you learn to you learn to not go to the local diner you know yeah. I mean because 
old angry white people, you know. But but so far oh, we don't we don't have uh, I, I I you know just like you you know you, you you hope that somebody will come out with something it's called a killer app that you can put on your computer and it does something wonderful. Where's the killer app in running against Trump? Uh, who is that killer app? You know which one of these people is the most capable of beating Donald Trump? Look, now, I'm, I think. Joe Biden is the guy that they need to run against him. I, I know a lot of people aren't going to agree with that. I, you know, I wish he would have ran last time. Well, but, do uh, you know how old he's going to be when yeah, Trump's age? He, uh, Trump's age. Right. I no, mean, uh, actually, guess, he's going to be he's going to be nine. He's going to be seventy eight. I mean, in I guess 2020. I don't care though. I mean, he looks fine to me. I yeah, mean, he looks fine, but you know, you know I, believe me, I know you could go at any time. <laughs> <laughs> We've had presidents die in office before, and you know, in some cases, yeah, we were the I, well, Let me put it this way: I think you're right on the in this respect. Biden is the best bet if you want somebody who's going to take Trump out to lunch every time Trump opens his fucking mouth. Biden will take care of him. All right, uh, I think Biden, in many ways, is Trump's worst fear. Uh, more than any other candidate out there. I think he, he thinks he can beat Bernie and he can beat uh, any of the other people that are running. Uh, some of them are still too new to really be running. Um, but I think Biden worries him because Biden ain't going to take any shit out of him. You yeah, know? And, and they, they, they can't play the socialist card on, on Joe Biden. Not I mean, at all. You know, at all. And, and I still say, I mean... If they team him up with someone, you know, similar in nature, like, hey, Sherrod Brown in Ohio, I talked about him before, is talking about running for president. But don't you think that if they put a guy like that on a ticket with someone mm -hmm. like Joe Biden, I mean, Sherrod Brown's been elected statewide in Ohio. Winning Ohio is going to be key. I mean, yeah, it's key every time. Deal. You know, Sherrod Brown has got the, the blue collar look, the way the came up in the life. I mean, very well, there, there's Joe another Biden. good thing about Sherrod Brown, and that's this. I don't know a thing about him, and neither does most of America. Right. And I think a candidate that people don't know a lot about is a better candidate than one that they've been having to put up with I mean, for years. I, I think the only place that we're going to run into trouble with the Democratic Party is when I say something like that, the, the people, oh, there you go again. You just want two white men. You know, like, Let me ask you look, this, though. This, I mean, you want to win, or I got, you want to run people of this nature, that nature, and lose? You, I you got a cool, a cool you know? question to ask you. This is a quick one. Who is the worst candidate so far out of the Democratic batch that you think does not have a chance no matter what? Uh, Castro. Really? Uh, I'd say Tulsi Gabbard. I don't even know who Castro is to tell you the truth. I think I think uh, what Pocahontas. What what's her name? Uh, yeah. Elizabeth Warren. Yeah, Elizabeth Warren. That, Elizabeth I, Warren. Elizabeth I, Warren I would kick uh, no, Trump's I butt. think she's a terrible candidate. You know, I, I got to tell you, you have to consider. You have to consider right. a demeanor. You have to consider look. You have what to. What about you know, policy? You no. Know, I'm telling you, matter. do you want them to win or you yeah. want them to lose? As a senator. This is you America, know? right? It doesn't I mean, make any difference if they win. We all know Hi we know Hillary Clinton would have made a a much better president than Donald Trump, That's right. but right. she didn't have the it. charisma. It. But she didn't. Didn't have, have it. Right. Of voting machines. And I don't think that I don't think that Elizabeth Warren has it. I don't think her Q. I don't I mean, think her Q rating is high enough. I, there I just, are certain people that serve the purpose that they serve, and they serve it well. And I think Elizabeth Warren is a fine senator from Massachusetts. Right. And I think that's why. And she that's is. where she should stay. I you, agree. Yeah. Agree. Yeah. yeah. Um, I like her. I mean, you know. That's right. I, I have nothing against her, but I just don't. I, I, I just think that this is a mediaized age, and you have to look at who is electable. And a lot of that has to do with the way you look. You know. They say John Kennedy won in 61 because of his looks, his, his appearance on television. Yep, exactly. Hey, listen, uh, we have a little theme playing. If you if you listen to that closely, this has been a really nice discussion tonight. Uh, there was something missing here that kind of aided it in it being a good discussion. 
I wonder what that is. I wonder what that was. Hey, Rob Alfano, thank you so much for having joined us. Uh, uh, also, a big thank you to Charlie Wallace. Always good having you here. Bree, nice when you call in from Dubai. Jeff, always good to have you here. And Josh, wow, what a great, intelligent, uh, decent panel this was. Uh, give a big wave goodbye so everybody can uh, see you going away. Okay, and I'll wave back. How's that? Okay. Thank you, everybody. Uh, hopefully, we'll see you again tomorrow night, uh, right back here. Uh, tomorrow night, of course, as, as usual, Damien will not be on because he has not uh, been able to be on for the last uh, week or so because of uh, technical problems. But hopefully, he'll be back with us really soon. Uh, listen, uh, stay tuned now for Jack Bishop and the Intersection, and uh, I will see you again tomorrow night, uh, 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Bye.